All right, I'll call this meeting to order for June 4, 2019. Resolve that the agenda for the June 4, 2019 regular meeting of the council be approved as amended. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? Carry. Result that the minutes of the May 21st, 2019 regular meeting, council meeting, and the May 27th, 2019 special council meeting be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? So I'll move right down to 6.1 communications. We have a letter there from uh, Maureen McDill thanking uh, Public Works for the work that they have done uh, in front of her business and the connection, I guess it was. So uh, make sure you send off a thank you to the people that were mentioned in the letter, Darren, Darren Harvey and Paul Klein and Jordan Brooks and Matt Leslie and the rest of the crew that have uh, done a good job. It's nice to see that we get a letter from, you know, a repair thing the work and, and recognizing the, the stuff that we have been doing. So uh, make sure you pass that on to the rest of the, the crew there. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Was that a collapse line from curb to, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Was, was that right? a collapse line from a uh, leaking line? So was the water line or the pressure? So I just saw the water coming out, so we had to go in and repair it. Okay. Result of the Superintendent of Works report be received, moved by Councillor Antoni, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, questions? Councillor Morio. Um, for the second, uh, looking for sec second application, do we normally have to do two or is it always? Usually in the spring, we have to do two to three, and then in the midsummer one, we do two usually, and then the fall one, we do as uh, two cells, as we discharge, there's less and less volume of water. So it's just a higher concentration on the first one that requires. Yeah, that was like 5.2, I think, milligrams per liter. We got it down to about 3.3. .3. So this one will probably take it down to a little bit above one. And we have to get below one. Further question? All in favor? Just here. <clears throat> Resolve that the handy van report for April 2019 be received. Moved by Councillor uh, Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Questions? All in favor? It's carried. Resolve that the May Fire Department report be received. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor. Memorial discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Okay, seven point three council and CO reports. I'll start with uh, Councilor Gray. Uh, well, I've met with uh, our settlement service meeting was always moved to. September or June 10th, because we had our meeting yesterday with G5. And G5 was um, less than entirely helpful. I, I, we have to do something about what we're doing. We have to have come with some focus as to what we're doing with G5. Um, if it's a social event, that's fine, but we should know that. Um, if it's intended to be a, some kind of building exercise, then we should do that. Um, but we didn't discuss very much yesterday. Um, but we were all of us were asked to put things on the agenda, and I guess we could have added things, but um, without knowing how long the presentations were going to be and so on, it was impossible to do. On top of which, it, we would have been impossible to do without uh, background materials. It seems to be self evident we need to have another meeting before the October meeting where we talk about um, whether or not there are going to be shared services, uh, whether that's a rise or recreation or fire department or whatever it is, we, we need to have some plan as to what we're doing um, because we perpetually go into uh, circles, for lack of a better word, um, 
rise in particular comes to mind. It appears the arm of Antonis is going to blow entirely. Um, that was at least one of their counselors' views, two of their counselors' views. And I asked them what, they, what their resolution meant. Um, they, they may or may not tonight reconsider that. And I guess they'll figure out, they can't reconsider it yet. They have to reconsider it by giving a motion to do that. Um, if they do withdraw, um, there was a, a, a motion some years ago about what would happen if there was dissolution, um, but that doesn't mean if somebody pulls out. We, so we've covered that in rise. We redid the budget with the numbers that were um, based on the old numbers, which is what our Swan Valley West paid at fifty percent, which effectively leaves us with no economic development officer um, unless we convert. Um, Stacy's position to being the economic development officer. And uh, we, and I think we have to look at that. And with almost no project money. So it's kind of almost a waste in some ways. It's it's spending money. Well, we're not going to get many results. And so it seems to me impractical. But we need to have a discussion with our municipal partners about that. Um, we said this afternoon planning with Patty for our recreation committee meeting, which is coming up next week today at 7. Um, what else? Um, we, well, obviously, we passed the budget, sort of. And um, I don't know if Mr. Degrees ever sent the letter to EMM that we were planning on. We have. We have. And, yeah, and to be, and the second letter also. To the minister about the CD as well. So I saw that one right after that. So yeah, I don't know about it, but yeah. we did send the letter to you. I did, yeah. We have a copy at some point. You want a copy of it? Please. Okay. So that's it. Okay. I agree with you on that, on that the G5, and I think that maybe we need to meet before, but we definitely have to come up with some the final there. So, uh, Councilor DeWay. Um, on the 23rd, we had a district rec meeting, and um, it was it was discussed there what we're going to do since the, gov the government has changed the way uh, they're going to be funding district bracket. The money that they had given us for it is now included in our in our lump sum basket funding. Um, and we all seen the the letter that came out as far as how that got broken down for this year though. Um, it was discussed that we would continue to fund uh, the district at, at, the, at the same level as though as though the province had put the funding in. And so we are going to take the province's share and put it in the district rec and it will still give us back the, the rebates. Um, and then going forward, let's see, we'll come up with the plan. Um, I had a planning district meeting last Monday. Uh, nothing the eventful to report there, and I agree. Last night's G five was one of the more disappointing ones as far as purpose. Um, not to say they get much more purposeful, but uh, I think you're right. We do need to either make it mean something, and and I, I know there's no way to make it binding, but at least have some sort of a um, a mechanism to to make it mean something. That's all I have to report. Okay. Just, uh, the District Recreation Commission, we also have a um, audit that we're proposing and a process for meeting um, that you intended and that we can report on. I didn't because I was on the phone, but, um, but I assumed that you were going to oh, report yes. on that. Or when well, yeah, actually, I kind of forgot. Right? I'm always worried about the money. Um, but no, we're having a... Uh, 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 not necessarily a recreation facilities audit, but a recreation, you know, programming audit, a recreation and total audit. Um, it's this program that uh, that these uh, two gentlemen from uh, from the province came and spoke on. Um, we're going to. It's been done in larger centers. We're hoping that maybe the the uh, the outfit that that came up with the, these audits to see where where you need to go as far as recreation. Um, they can adapt it to a smaller community and maybe do a trial run here in Swan River. So we're going to be working on that over the summer um, with a 
the, the first group to go through will be our board, and then we're going to open up to a larger rec, rec organizations in the early fall. So that, uh, that's on the paraphrase in there. What's that with Martin from yeah. Dawkins? Yeah. And I guess, I guess one, I know I handed it off, but I'm going back to one second. I just wanted to recognize Derek and Darren for the last eight, ten months. Um, you guys have gone above and beyond filling roles that aren't necessarily yours that you probably weren't necessarily comfortable with or ready with. And we appreciate it greatly. And for everybody in the office, through, and it's, it's going to be coming to a, to a the new CAO is starting next week. So just wanted to let you know that your efforts have been very much appreciated over the last 10 months or so. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Councilor Tony. I <clears throat> uh, just want to reiterate, uh, Councilor Delorier, thanks, gentlemen, and everybody in the office for doing a great job while we were um, working on finding a new CAO. So once again, thank you from, from myself and the rest of council as well. Um, planning district I attended, we're still waiting to do the year-end um, audit from the 2018, which uh, Mr. Ganita is, is patiently waiting for, so that is scheduled. I'm not sure where it is exactly. Lynn, Lynn sent me an email, but I haven't uh, replied back to that one. Um, also had the opportunity to go with some fellow councillors from other municipalities to Winnipegosis on a cell service lobbying group. Um, there was about 35 of us in Winnipegosis with the similar concerns about cell service throughout the area. Um, I think that we have, we've succeeded a small step, I guess, in creating a task force. So we've got that moving forward. Um, and hoping that we can tie into some things like bipolar and, and different avenues. So I know that there were several meetings that were um, transpiring in the last week um, in that regard. So there are steps being moved forward, um, although if you were at that meeting, uh, a, f a fellow dealer, fellow Rogers dealer from Dauphin was very adamant that we were all wasting our time and we shouldn't be there. And it was, it was quite interesting. But anyway, we're making progress with with that and hopefully we see some results. I do have to apologize that I wasn't here yesterday for the G5 meeting. Um, although it's, I guess I, I need to ask more questions and hopefully we can talk about what G5 looks like and what, what it's all about. I'm not really, I guess I don't understand why there's no process in deciding on anything and why we, why voting can't happen and things like that. But I guess that's a discussion for, Later, also, I'm not sure if the date has been put in for the next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. October. October. Okay. And are, who's hosting that one? Swan Valley West. Okay. Seventh. Thank you. Um, I guess the next um, item that I have to talk about is our RISE, <laughs> RISE meeting and economic development. Um, I just want to express my um, disappointment, I guess, in, in other municipalities who feel that economic development and tourism is, is meaningless and that um, that it's not very well respected. And unfortunately, economic development, if you look at any other communities and how they thrive and move forward, it hinges heavily on economic development and tourism. So it disappoints me that, um, that we all don't see it the same way. I do have some concerns and I would like to talk about that if we could a little bit in camera. I think that that might be a little bit of some, some topics that maybe we should talk about in cameras as far as what we might have thoughts on. If not, we can talk about it at some point. Um, that was everything that I had to talk about. Okay, thank you. Call Um On the 24th, I attended the district recreation uh, meeting with Councillor Dory and Councillor Gray, which they reported on already. Um, 28th, I attended with Councillor White uh, the Prairie Mountain Health Stakeholders meeting uh, in the morning, uh, where CEO Penny Gilson gave us uh, an update on some happenings and the stance or where the PMH is standing right now. 
Uh, she indicated that at the end of the fiscal year, they ended up with a roughly a $6 million surplus, which was due to a bunch of vacancies that um, was vacancy managed and whatnot. If uh, they would have um, been able to fill all those vacancies, they would have ran a deficit. So due to the vacancies, they had a slight surplus. So, um, on the 30th, um, I attended uh, the Ag Society meeting um, where we primarily discussed um, planning for the rodeo due to the um, uh, not being able to have events in the arena, so where contingency places would be uh, for a tent for the talent stage and dances and uh, the ta- um, video play the, and all those things, which will be split up between a tent and the veterans hall. So there'll be some logistics to work out with that that uh, will communicate to the departments that need to be. Um, yesterday, I attended the G5 presentation on the meeting. Also, there was a presentation from the Arctic Gateway Group, which was informative um, on the information that they brought forward. So wish them luck on their venture and uh, to go from that. Um, also, just want to mention that uh, I've received uh, many positive comments about uh, the OSS bins showing up there recently. Uh, people are excited to start looking to use them um, and looking forward to see how that works. Uh, I've received a lot of positive comments. Also, want to extend a, a welcome out to the high school rodeo provincial finals that are here on June 7th and 9th uh, this weekend. So, welcome to our community and enjoy uh, the events for that. And also to the uh, 55 plus uh, individuals that are coming here next week um, to do the games that we're here hosting in the Valley. So I uh, wish them all the good luck and excitement and fun and friendship that they have for the week. And lastly, I just want to commend and say thank you to uh, uh, interim CEO Derek Poole for uh, doing the job for the last little bit. This is your, gets your last council meeting that you'll be in the CEO chair. And to uh, Darren Harvey for uh, filling in as the superintendent of work. So, I guess next week you guys go back to your regular positions and uh, breathing a sigh of relief. But, but uh, much appreciated um, what you guys uh, stepped up to do in, in the crunch. Thanks. So, thank you. Councillor Friesen. Um, yesterday, um, we had about 10 communities bloom ladies and we planted all the flowers in the cemetery. Thanks to Jordan for getting the filled. Thanks to Paul for getting us some rakes. And we're hoping that whoever starts working out there will take our water in. Something we'll have to talk about. Uh, the planters on the boulevard are all done. Coxes. Um, the planter over the flags are being done tonight by Gary's Greenhouse. Uh, May 31st was Arbor Day. Planted some trees that day too. Evergreens down in uh, Rotary Park. Uh, thanks for mentioning 55 plus games. Um, we had a banner walk through today with the uh, we have 13 zones that are going to be represented here. And that opening ceremonies is uh, June 11th at 9 in the morning. And everyone's welcome if you'd like to come. It'll be a short Welcome to everybody and just uh, kind of recognizing the people that are, have come. Um, the G5, the meal was spectacular. Um, and the rail line speech was good. They were, uh, I mean, I'm a railroad person. I wish we had our rail here. But we don't. Um, July 1st, plans are still in motion. <coughs> Um, Councillor Gray, I believe your settlement services coordinator had her baby. Congratulations to Yulia and Suji. And I would also like to thank Aaron and Derek, especially if he's got a check for the of of Luna. Check them. You don't. Okay. Um, anybody complaining about the Raymonds? They are just crazy in their case. I'm not sure why. It's just, garbage. No, it's not garbage. They're nuts. 
you know, scary nuts. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Council of Reason. So my apologies for making you eat like that last time. Yeah, right. It wasn't intentional. Yeah, sure it wasn't. <laughs> uh, I don't have much more to report than whatever was mentioned already. Uh, I was kind of hoping one thing that we could do is have a planning meeting for next Tuesday night if everybody could be available. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have a chance to discuss the, the main key government request and proposal plus our First Nations discussions as well as uh, rise discussions if we can, and as well as if we have time, a little bit of budget. So if we could perhaps uh, pop a few of those things in there that evening, that would be great. We, we have, that is we have the uh, point that. of your oh, thought. Oh, okay, right, okay. Sorry. Okay. So I forgot all about that. Okay. okay. So we'll have to plan a different night, but I'll kind of look at the calendars and see, because I think these are some of the things that are important that we have to get talking about. So. Um, G5, I agree that we need, and I think that some were kind of even mentioning last night that things need to change and we're starting to hear that and, and hopefully we can build on that. We're going to have to maybe talk ourselves about what we think it should be and get everybody together and talk about that. Um, yeah, next week is going to be a busy next few days with the high school rodeo. I think this is their last of the three years. This um, yeah, so uh, they've done an excellent job that uh, committee and, and group that has been dedicated to that program for the last three years. And then, of course, Magic with 55 plus games and looking forward to uh, that and, and all the extra people that we're going to have here competing for uh, uh, their awards, I guess, or their excellence in their sports. So that's it for me. Uh, I'll give it to you, Mr. Brown. Uh, just keeping up with the workload. Uh, I did evaluations for the, the clerks. They're done. Um, met with Charles Cole last Friday to tour public works in the, in the landfill and we talked about uh, some current uh, projects and initiatives that the town is going through. But uh, I'm sure we're going to dive a lot deeper into that next week. Uh, I just want to thank Council for, for putting up with my experience. Uh, I know I wanted to get a lot more things going and implemented, but uh, I, I definitely focused on getting this office ready for when, when Charles comes, and I think we are. The morale is a lot higher, and communication is a lot better, so we are excited and we're ready to go to the next, the next door, the next step. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> New business. Resolved that the Northwest Regional Library audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2018, be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion. I guess I'm going to try to answer, try, try to answer any questions you guys have, but if, uh, if not, I can try to find an answer. Okay. Councillor Morio. Um, I just took a quick glance through uh, some of them. Do I see right that they had about $30,000 surplus last year after they, all the fight that they had for not having They did, money. but they had some vacancies. They had one and a half vacancies for almost the whole, one of them was for almost the whole year, another one was for about three or four months. So, okay, that so they, they, had, they had some vacancies that won't be there going forward. Okay. Councilor Friesen. Plus, they had two $10,000 donations made to. It had nothing to do with our budget, but it went into the library budget. That's where 20000 of that came from. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.2. Resolved that the following 24 building permit applications totaling an estimated value of $1.5 sorry, $1,527,321 be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Questions? All in favor? It's carried. Result of the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission audited financial statements for the year and the December 31st, 2018 be received. Moved by Councillor 
Move to only second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Is that just what the same resolution was? Is it one the library had to wreck them all? One was the library, yeah. I don't know. That's what I thought. <laughs> Resolved that the Manitoba 55 plus game is being held on June 11 to the 13th, 2019. Be, be, sorry, be declared a community event. Further, be it resolved that the Swan River Curling Club be given access to the Legion Park for the purpose of holding a liquor permit for beer gardens on the said premises during that time period from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. each day. It's moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Whereas the Town of Swan River Temporary Ice Surface Project has called the Swan River Centennial Arena Ice Surface to be unable to be unable to be rented, and whereas the Swan Valley Sport Fishing that has been incorporated has, as a result, been forced to make last-minute plans to hold its annual event that is normally held in the Centennial Arena has incurred extra expenses in order to do so. Therefore, be resolved that the Town of Swan River grant. Swan Valley Sport Fishing Enhancement Incorporated, the amount of extra expenses as approved by the CO to the maximum amount of $2,500. Moved by Councillor. <laughs> Do I have a mover? Uh, when Tony seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion. Councillor Friesen. I'm just wondering what, what was the extra cost? Do you know? If you look at Link request for the bullet, that'll lose some of them. Yeah, and then there's an option there that you can open up. Okay. Yeah, I talked I talked to the coordinator and uh, they couldn't give me exact costs because they are they're getting a lot of in-kind things, so at the end he's gonna give me what they incur on top. So that's how why I worded the resolution that way that it'd be approved by the CAO to we figured it wouldn't be more than twenty five grand dollars. What does that mean? We've got a lot of in kind things. Uh, for example, uh, some, like some of the businesses are just aren't charging them full rates. They're, they're charging them less. So he, he doesn't know what that's going to be. He just knows that they're going to get a discounted rate. So, uh, on, he, he like, uh, like just for example, with quarter bodies, we know how much that is to rent a day. He can confirm you're not going to get charged that total amount. Is no way he's going to get charged. So I said, well, when you find that out, you can let us know and, and we can help reimburse those costs that you couldn't have had if you really wanted. So I, I just tried to get a detailed amount, but uh, it was difficult. Councilor, a uh, couple things. Um, they're only asking in their letter for $970. That's true. So anything above that? They need to, as far as I'm concerned, would have to put in another request for it because this letter is asking for nine hundred seventy dollars. Yeah, I guess I, uh, I, I, I had just heard from from council that we were going to cover all expenses that would go to the, the Fish Enhancement uh, Incorporated because of the move, and and just with talking with the coordinator, I, I don't think that that was. Said, I think that the talk had been that in the example of, say, the Ag Society, which we, who we have an agreement with, who uses the arena uh, annually to their rodeo, that they would be, we would help them out because we would be displacing them. Yeah. I think that was the conversation, if I am That's correct. Because so, okay. the, the second thing is, is this, uh, they're not being displaced, well, they weren't displaced from the arena due to the ice failure and stuff like that. This was due to the primary function of the skating rink was for skating, for stampeders going on through that. So I don't see or feel why rink bears or the council should be responsible for being having to be relocated due to a function that's the primary function of this facility extending its season for what it was intended for. Um, it, it's like I, I applaud the um, fish enhancement group and stuff like that, but they chose that date, like tight timelines after a season, 
knowing that full well that they could potentially go on and could be displaced again. So I don't see why the town needs to be on the hook for this every time the Stampeders or the skating thing goes beyond. So um, I understand like the Ag Society, that conversation was there because they're being displaced due to the malfunction of the ice service that's not available. But this was it's two, two different related issues in my mind. So. Councillor Delorier. So when they normal on a normal year when they would rent the arena, did they have to pay it? They got the chair, the chairs and tables come with the rental of the arena, correct? That's correct. Why was that? Why not? That's stunning to me. Why would anybody expect to get something for free? I guess at the hall we do the same. We don't charge when you rent the hall and you get the tables and chairs that are in the hall, right? Yeah. No. Sure, there's an extra charge, but no. You rent the hall, you rent the hall. That includes two tables and chairs. I I don't understand that. I, I, if you if you rent a hall, most places you can rent the hall. And whatever you want set up, if you go to, to any hotel anywhere and you want a room, they'll rent your room. And then your bed comes with it. Right? But the finish of your, not if you're having a meeting, if you're having a meeting and they have to set up, they charge you extra for that. They charge you for a setup. I don't understand. We charge for setup at the hall, but if you go and set up yourself, you can charge. Okay. Um, I guess we're getting a little way late. I, I don't. I don't agree with it. I thought we agreed we weren't going to give donations to anybody. I thought that was sort of a fundamental change in the way we were going to do business. And I, I, I applaud them. I went there. I, I supported them. I gave them donations. I gave them lot of stuff. More than what I would normally pay. But I don't see, I agree plus more. I don't understand why we would be asking taxpayers to be on the hook for it. And, and again, if, if we were breaking a contractual agreement because we were displacing them because of something that we had control over, then I think that's a, that may be a different thing. Yeah, this, like that, that me and Patty will follow that policy, but this is coming from a budget meeting where, where we were talking about the rink uh, floor and that we would incur the expenses of somebody who would have to move at last minute. It would be using the rink. Oh, this was the one. <clears throat> I, I assume they made a profit on this event. I, I guess that you know I would be more inclined to you know if, if the if the nine hundred seventy dollars was the difference between them breaking even or not, I'd be more inclined to maybe look at it. But they they probably made quite a bit of profit on this event. I mean, we can defer it so that they can give us an accurate number of what they actually want. And so they can come and make a, a case because there may be something, they may have a response as to why we would be compelled. But um, I thought we were pretty clear. And as the displacement that we were talking about, as far as I recall, was exactly the same as the mayor's, which was there were two parts to it. The first was it was displaced because we were taking up the space that was normally used. But more importantly, we have an actual contractual commitment with the agricultural society that says that we should be using. Like, that, that they're entitled to use that space. So we have an obligation to make that, that up because we have the land from them on that understanding, as I understand it. Councilman and Tony, didn't we also deny a, a request from a previous group who had to go to the curling club as well, uh, who was asking for a grant in lieu of donation and we're going to allow one and not the other side? I don't, I'm, I'm with Councillor Morio and Green on this one. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. If they want to resubmit, I, I have no problem with that, but I think come make a pitch. 8.6. Resolve that the Swan River Fire Department mission statement be received and approved. Be it further resolved that the Swan River attendance policy, fire, Fighter remuneration policy and rules of conduct policy be received and approved. Moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier. 
discussion. Councilor Delorier. Uh, question from Mr. Poole. What is the normal procedure when policies get changed like this as far as deploying them out to the, to the people affected by them or the staff? I, do you guys have to get a sign off, or do you guys, you know, something, some of that documents that they've read and understand the policy changes? Yeah, the fire department would be easier to do that. They will sign them. Yes. Okay. If the union, no. we have to read them, and then we sign and we read this. us reading. Okay. Well, Counts are great. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm not comfortable doing them. Have, have they been circulated already for comment by the firefighters? No. The, I believe the, the, officers. Draft, the, the officers in the, uh, that 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 board had brought to administration and the, and the committee to where it is now. So, so uh, I'd like to refer it so that we can have some further have some thoughts on it. That's my view. I don't I, at first I don't think they're well drafted, but more importantly than that. Um, I, I don't understand the impact of them or, or what it changed to us or why they're put in place. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to know that. Can we know? Can you respond to that? Um, the mission statement is just a, I believe it's. Well, that who came up with it? How they come up with it? Chris. What was that? Who came up with it? How they come up with it? Well, the, the, yeah, so I got it. Yeah. That was, it was the fire department, the officers, and, and the chief that uh, went through their existing uh, bio, or policies um, and updated them to where they're at now. So, so it was um, council was provided the originals and then what was updated in them. So, okay, I, I just got it today. For the first time I saw it, was like, uh, actually, they were. These were all mailed out to everybody's emails last week. Uh, you were sent out to my email? Yep. I sent it to everybody's Thomas Warner emails on behalf of the chair. Um, there was a request to respond by Thursday. Um, so should be so I'm sorry. I, I got them. I didn't see them. So I'm not saying I didn't. Yeah. Yep. Is the committee wishing to remove this and that's yeah, here they are. Um, I, the chair said at the, at the last at the meeting here where we had that uh, he was given to Thursday noon for um, comments. Um, the following day there were electronic copies were, were sent out and hard copies put in people's uh, bunks, uh, mail bunks. So I think we'll see. There could always be changes made to it at any point in time as well. It's not necessarily uh, the end of the room, that's for sure. So if there has to be, if the will of council is to prove it, then we can move on and we can always make changes like moving down the road. Like I, I know the CEO there has seen yeah. the changes and stuff like that. So. And they, they, like they can, they can be amended in the future. The they are in place and they are different from the town policies because it is the only thing I can relate it to that you guys, not just an analogy, I guess, is the, the CBA with recreation and public works. Public works 730 to 430 policies fit into that very nicely. They don't, however, fit into casuals who are weekends and evenings and mornings and, and stuff like that. So just that's the only thing I, how I can how I can say that that these would fit the fire department. They're, they're geared towards that work. Uh, and that's just what I wanted to touch on. All right. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Secretary. Mm -hmm. Resolve that the town of Sword River send the following representatives to the AMM. June meeting held in Gilbert Plains, June 12, 2019. House Morio, Councillor White, and Councillor Delorier. Anybody else want to add their name to that list? Thank you, Mother Dan. Moved by Councillor. Is Senior uh, um, Crawl going to be? He's, yeah. he's already registered. Okay. So, but we need to be on this list also. That's it. 
That's a great point. Okay, so we'll add CAO uh, Crawl to the list. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Wintoni for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Eight point eight. Resolved that uh, Councillor Wintoni attend the cell service inquiry group. Meeting in Winnipeg Oasis, May 23rd, 2019. Moved by Councillor Morio, sent by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve that. Be it resolved that the accounts of forms were hereby approved for payment. The general accounts number, uh, checks number 24419 and 24487 for a total of $457,914.17. Wire transfer May 28 for $13,634.13. And payroll accounts check number 4465 to 4472 for a total of 108,576 and 56 cents. Moved by Councillor Wentoni, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, questions? Councillor Morio and Councillor Delorier. Uh, two checks. Um, <coughs> um, 24483 to wrap C granite. I understand it, it's for potentially damaged by the more. Um, do we have <laughs> prevent or issues? Like, this is not the first time that we've damaged a headstone with the more and things like that. Is there, like, there's work procedures or something that can be implemented to where we can potentially hopefully reduce damages to headstones with the mortars, or is it? Uh, um, yeah, I was going to check with the guys because that one, it was a sloped headstone. Uh, I was going to check with the mechanics if and I'm not sure this will work, but if we could potentially put a rubber strip around the bottom, so that will make a difference. Uh, we got talked to them in the winter just about making sure, like, they know to walk into a grave when they're digging, but just making sure that they do that and they're paying attention to because the flush mount one, or not flush mount, but the pillow block ones, once there's a foot of snow, they get completely covered. So had to make sure that whichever route they're going, they walk that full route. Or do we need to study force operator due diligence in there versus yeah. um, one of their five seconds, not saying it's negligent, but <coughs> their boo boo is costing a significant amount of money every time they do it. And then the second one I got is the last one, two, four, four, eight, seven, this foaming penetrating spray. Is that something for public works or the fire department? That stuff. I'm pretty sure that's the fire department, but I can double check. We <laughs> <laughs> not any of the other. It's a Texas refinery. I'll bring it back to you. It might be in that other folder. No, we are for the mechanics for. Might have been for the tar baby. Yeah. Yes, they're playing on the inside of the. Uh, okay. Can you say that again? I didn't hear you. To clean out the inside of the tack distributor. Okay. For the big crack seal. Oh. Okay. That it? Council Moore. Oh. Council Two four four two two Mitchell one thirty one twenty one. Um, mechanics computer stuff remains. Is that a yearly thing we have to pay, or is that like uh, a one-off thing? Or that is a two-year okay deal. 
it's so we can plug in our our engines and okay. troubleshoot. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Result of bylaw three two thousand nineteen tax certificate fee bylaw be read a third time in the past. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Delory. Discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Oh, I'm sorry. Vote against it each time. I don't know why I wouldn't vote against it this time. My apologies. That was a recorded vote, right? I guess I think we missed it, that. Because that was third reading. Yeah. Third reading is up. Always recorded votes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yeah. To be yes. yeah, third reading should be recorded. Yeah. So we can go ahead and do that. Councillor uh, Friesen was in favor. Councillor Morio was in favor. Councillor Wendy Tony was in favor. I was in favor. And Councillor Dory was in favor. Councillor Greg was opposed. Okay. Yeah. I guess just to, I know we had to discuss the, the reasonings for that, but uh, a big a portion of that is to cover our liability. So it is a legal document, and if we do make a mistake, we are responsible for the repercussions of that. But. 11.2. The result of the Council of Deputies bylaw be read a first time by Councillor. Gray, seconded by Council Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's buried. This will be a recorded vote as well. Result that bylaw number 4, 2019, the Fire Prevention and Emergency Service bylaw, be read a third time and passed. Moved by Councillor Lentoni, second by Councillor Morio. All in favor? Carry. We'll have a notice of motion. I don't believe we have any issues in camera unless there is something that we have, uh, like a legal matter or anything like that. But. But that used to be the rise. I don't know if that was in front of him. We can defer to the next agenda. If you want we to defer to the planning meeting, I'm fine with that. Okay. Resolve that this regular meeting of council now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned.